Hi, I'm Molly with West Virginia University Extension Family Nutrition Program. And today I'm gonna make a healthy Thanksgiving side dish, and this is butternut squash casserole. The first thing that we wanna make sure we do anytime we're cooking is wash our hands in the cooking surface and clean all of our fresh produce that we'll be using. I've already done that, so I'm ready to get started. Now this recipe calls for fresh butternut squash. And this may look intimidating, but I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to get into this. So butternut squash is very high in vitamin A. It's a deep, rich orange color that's very good for us to increase our orange fruits and vegetables in our diets. And we're gonna start by cutting off both bottoms, or the top and the bottom. And if you struggle with that, you could poke it with a fork and microwave it for a few minutes and that will make the cutting easier. The reason I did it like this is so that I have a flat surface so it's not wobbling around. And now I'm gonna cut down to make more flat surfaces. Now, since this is a winter squash, it's got a tough outside skin that we're not going to eat. So we're gonna peel it with a vegetable peeler. Now that I've removed all of the tough peel from the outside of the butternut squash, you see that there's some seeds and other parts, just like carving a pumpkin, that you want to remove. So you wanna get in there, get all those out. And then once you've done that, flip it over and you've got two flat surfaces to cut. So once we've got our squash ready to cut, we're gonna cut slices. Once you've got your butternut squash in slices, you can kind of stack up like-sized pieces and dice it into sticks. And then line up those sticks and make about one inch sized cubes. You wanna to try to make sure that the cubes are all about the same size so they'll cook evenly. And we are gonna end up with about nine and a half cups of cubed butternut squash. So I've got my butternut squash all diced into roughly one inch cubes and nine and a half cups here. And the next thing we're going to do is prepare our kale. And as I mentioned before, we have washed our kale and if you've ever prepared kale before, you notice that it's got this really tough stem going through it. So you don't want that as part of your dish. So you kind of just push your kale over to one side and it's pretty easy to remove that tough stem. So we're just gonna remove that and then we're left with the beautiful green kale that we're gonna chop up into bite-sized pieces. Here's another one that we're just going to kind of separate that tough stem. And if you've ever bought the bags of kale, a lot of times this tough stem is inside the bag. So it's, it is good to always prep it yourself. You're gonna save money that way and you're in control of what you've got in your dish. So I've got my kale separated from those stems and I'm just going to run my knife through it. You could also just tear the leaves and that's something that if you have a helper in the kitchen that they could tear the kale leaves as well. 
And now we're going to get to the cooking part of our butternut squash casserole. As you can see, this is a lot of butternut squash and kale plus our other ingredients. So we're gonna work in two batches to make it more manageable. So we're gonna get started with our first batch. So I have a pretty large skillet here and I'm going to do one tablespoon of our olive oil in the skillet. Heat that up a little bit and then add half of our butternut squash. And we're just gonna eyeball this. I'm just gonna grab a couple handfuls Okay, so we've got our butternut squash in our skillet, half of it. And our recipe also calls for some chopped fresh thyme or rosemary. I've got thyme here, and I'm gonna do, again, half of it, because this is just half a batch. And a few cranks of fresh ground black pepper and a little sprinkling of our salt. Wow. And we're gonna cook this until the squash starts to brown, which is really going to help release a lot of those flavors and start the caramelization process. And when we're cooking with butternut squash, I already mentioned that it's really high in vitamin A. And vitamin A is really vital for our eyesight. It helps us to see in the dark. When I go into the schools, I always talk to the kids about being able to see in the dark and how if they have a diet that's really high in vitamin A, they'll have night vision. So we are just going to saute this for a few minutes. It's not gonna get completely soft. Um, a lot of that will be done when we put it in the oven, but you do kind of want to brown the sides of it. We've been cooking our butternut squash for a few minutes, starting to brown, and now we're going to add half of our kale, half of our onions, and these have just been sliced. and half of our diced garlic. Once we've got this in here, we're gonna let the kale cook down and it'll start to wilt. And the garlic and onions will start to smell amazing and become translucent. So kale is very high in vitamin K, and that's going to be beneficial in our blood health. And it also has calcium, vitamin C, and potassium. So it really is a nutrient powerhouse. So I'm ready to put this in the oven. I'm going to spray my casserole dish with some vegetable oil cooking spray. Now we are just preparing half of our recipe. This dish would be way too small for our entire recipe. So this would be great. You could do two smaller ones or use a bigger nine by 13 and do one all at once. So I'm just gonna put this in. Pat this down into a nice even layer. And we are gonna put it in a preheated 375 degree oven. And while this is cooking, we're gonna prepare a delicious, cheesy, crunchy topping. I covered our butternut squash casserole with a piece of foil and put it in our preheated 375 degree oven for about 30 to 35 minutes. Now while that's cooking, we're gonna prepare our yummy topping. 
So I have three quarters of a cup of panko breadcrumbs. You could also make your own fresh bread crumbs if you like. I have a half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. Definitely, if you grate it yourself, you're gonna save a lot of money. We are also using minced fresh sage, and I've got a tablespoon of that. A quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. If you don't have a quarter teaspoon, then you can just use a half teaspoon and eyeball it a little bit. And then we are also adding two tablespoons of melted unsalted butter. And that's gonna help with the crunch factor. So once I have all my ingredients mixed together, I wanna coat them all with that yummy butter. And that's gonna help it turn golden brown. When our casserole comes out of the oven, we are going to sprinkle this on top and let it bake for a few more minutes uncovered. So I just removed our butternut squash casserole from the oven. It was in for about 30 to 35 minutes or until we were able to insert a knife or a fork very easily into one of the pieces of squash. You wanna make sure that squash is cooked. So I'm going to remove our foil and sprinkle on some of this yummy topping. Really smells delicious. And if you remember, we did half of our casserole. So I'm just gonna add half of this topping and then add the other half to the rest of the casserole. So we are going to leave the foil off because now we want this to get toasty and golden brown. We're gonna return this back to our oven. We are gonna reduce the temperature a little bit in the oven to 350. We're gonna put this back for about 20 minutes and then we'll be ready to go. I just took our butternut squash casserole out of the oven and our breadcrumb and cheese mixture is toasted perfectly and I cannot wait to try this. I'm gonna get a good scoop with our kale and our butternut squash and our sliced onions. And the squash is cooked perfectly. Mmm, that is delicious. You can really taste the nutmeg in the topping. It's crunchy, but soft. Be sure to check out our YouTube and Facebook pages for more delicious and healthy recipes.